Hi, Dave here at Photokina. I'm on the Sigma Imaging stand with Mr. Kazuto, CEO of Sigma Imaging. And behind me, we have a whole raft of new lenses. Of particular interest are these new art lenses down here. So Mr. Kazuto, if you could tell me a little bit about the new lenses that you've launched. Yes, uh, at this Photokina, we announced three new lenses. The first one is a 12-24 f4 art. And second is a 85 f1.4 art and 500 millimeter f4 uh, sports. And with the art range of lenses, what are you trying to give to photographers? Where are you going? Uh, the concept of art lens is to, to prioritize the image quality, to deliver the, uh, achieve the best image quality by deprioritizing the size, weight, and the cost. So we'd like to deliver these lenses to those who really want to get uh, the best image quality. Okay. Um, if we start over this end with the 1224, I'm very interested in how you've done this. Obviously, we have a big aspheric lens, yeah. and I'm really curious as to how you've managed it, what technology you've used. Well, first of all, uh, Sigma is a pioneer of the wide-angle zoom lens. In 1979, we developed the 21 to 35, and we believe this is the first wide-angle zoom lens. And since then, we've been continuing to the widest angle zoom lens. After this lens, after that lens, 21 to 35, we've developed 18 to 35, 17 to 35, 15 to 30, and 12 to 12 to 24. The first version of the 12 to 24 in 2003. So we have been passionate to make the wide angle zoom lens. And then uh, current products is 12 to 24 f 4.5 to 5.6, a little bit dark, uh, slow. So we wanted to. Uh, elevate this 12 to 24 with an F4 uh, stop. And uh, in order to provide the deliver this lens at the affordable price, we developed uh, the new technology for the grass molding as well. Uh, historically and traditionally, the grinding technology is used to form a large diameter spherical lens, but it's very costly. Then literally the company grind the glass one by one. It's really costly. So, but the glass molding technology is good to reduce the uh, cost, but it's what well, has been suitable for the small diameter aspect of it. So we developed a new machine to uh, mold the, such a big diameter aspect of it. So we work with a machine supplier and we developed a new technology and then finally we achieved the, such a technology to make this kind of lens. Wow, so it, it's actually it's a technology tour de force yes. to help, help you bring the price down. Yes. Yep. Now, if we move on to the, the 85, obviously this is an incredibly popular lens for portrait photographers. Yes. Image quality is absolutely paramount. Yeah. Where, where are you going with, with the 85? Well, uh, we already have an 85 1.4 existing lens. It's not an art series, but the existing one. And the, the, it's very sharp image, a very sharp lens. And we like that quality, but the, we find, find several points to be improved. First, uh, even better image quality than the existing 85, which is uh, uh, worth the name of the art series. And second is the uh, great bokeh. Uh, the, the bokeh should be uh, better for the portrait. And then uh, longitudinal uh, aspect, uh, chromatic operation. To be honest, the existing one has a relatively visible uh, chromatic operation, so we wanted to minimize it. So with this lens, uh, we wanted to improve that three points. And then, uh, as you know, the uh, Kautzeiss Otis 85, that's the best 85 uh, lens in the market today, and we respect that lens very much. So we set it, that lens for benchmark, but, um, but the Otis is uh, just a manual focus. So because of a very shallow depth of field, it's not easy for wider range of photographers to enjoy such a great performance. So we wanted to deliver, uh, achieve the best image quality, or at least the same quality, equipment quality as Otas 85 with autofocus function. That's okay. our goal. And you, you've done it with this, you think? Of course, I think, I, I, we, uh, I think our engineer and our staff at the factory did a great job. 
Fabulous. Okay, I, I look forward to trying one. Please. Okay, and then up here at the complete other end of the scale of focal yeah. length, we've got uh, a 500. Yep. Um, obviously great for, for sports wildlife. Yes. Um, what, what, what's making this one so special? Yeah, uh, we already have the 500 meter F1.4 existing lens, but we wanted to upgrade this lens to this lens, uh, worse the name of the sports series. And uh, we really wanted to make a real professional uh, telephoto lens. The optical performance is already uh, superb, and uh, uh, with a uh, ceiling and uh, magnesium parts, we implemented the many functions to support the professional photographers. And uh, our goal is to provide deliver this uh, lens at a affordable price uh, to a wider range of the users. Well, to be honest, uh, there are many 500 F4 lenses from major manufacturers. They are really great lenses, but it's not affordable for the many customers. So we wanted to provide this lens to with an affordable price, more affordable price to the wider range of the product. That's our that was our, our goal. And I think we achieved this goal. So what is the what's the optical performance if we start talking about MTF here? Is it we're talking very high performance? Yes of course it's uh, almost perfect from center to edge. Uh, the MTF curve is almost perfect, and I would say it's not an MTF curve, but the MTF straight line. Okay, again, I, I look forward to trying this. So, I guess if we if we take a step back and look at the art art range, why would you say photographers should maybe move away if they're a maybe they're a Nikon or a Canon or a, you know shooter? Why should they be looking at the art lens? Well, uh, Nik Nikon, Canon also make a great lenses, and but the, uh, I strongly believe that the photographers should have a choice or option. And when it comes to the image quality, uh, we try to hit the best image quality art. Although uh, the weight and the uh, size are a bit bulkier and heavier, but uh, we want to uh, uh, deliver this lens to those who really, really uh, enjoy the, the best image quality. So Mr. Kazuto, we're looking around at Photokina, you've obviously been looking around at Photokina, and there's a lot of mirrorless. Where do you see the mirrorless market moving to? I think the future of the mirrorless camera is uh, promising. Uh, there are many advantages uh, on mirrorless camera over conventional DSLR. Uh, first of all, the focus is more accurate than DSLR. This is the uh, nature of the structure of the camera. So. Uh, the, the higher the resolution becomes, the more the focus of becomes visible. So focus accuracy is very important. And second, uh, the, with the, because the mirror is not, does not exist, the, the, the mirror shock does not exist. So you can, uh, you can, you can have, a, you have the less uh, blur the image from the mirror shock. That's the second advantage. A third advantage, the, the instant feedback to the customers. Uh, exposure, uh, white balance, and many feedback, instant feedback from the uh, EVF or uh, back monitor. So these three advantages are very important for certain type of photographers. So if we look forward, do you think that DSLRs are going to eventually phase out and everything will become mirrorless? Or do you think there will be a place for both of them? I don't think so because uh, 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 I think that both camera exist and actually most of I predict that the most of the high-end uh, photographers will use both conventional DSLR and the mirrors because for the, the to take picture of the sports or wider uh, life the conventional DSLR is far better than mirrors. Uh, I think I firmly believe that the technology will overcome such a difficulty in mirrors, like, like a, a fast uh, feedback on the EVF or something, but it still can be better than the DSR in, the quick re in terms of quick response. So those photographers sh will need the DSR in, even in the future. And also the 
I personally like the feeling of the very high-end DSL. So I don't think that the DSL, conventional DSL phase uh, will uh, phase out uh, in, the, in the future. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts and for your time. Thank um, you. We shall see you again at the next one.